Okay, how are we all doing? So we're up to, up to chapters 8 and 9 today. And so we're talking about uh, both single area and, and uh, multi-area OSPF. Now I'm going to demonstrate multi-area OSPF, but I will um, highlight the differences between single and multi-area where it, where it occurs. So we have a topology here. And so uh, we have a multi-area topology, of course. And so we have three routers. And so uh, this is area zero, of course, the backbone area. And there is this is area one and this is area two. Now it's a very small topology for multi-areas, but it does illustrate it. And so router one, of course, is gonna be the area border router between area zero and area one. And router three is going to be the area border router between area zero and area two. And so uh, router one and router two both have two Ethernet interfaces uh, connected to them and they're part of area one. And the WAN links and the LAN hanging off of R2 are, are all part of our area zero. And so the uh, hosts have, uh, the routers have been configured with both IPv4 and IPv6 addressing and uh, they've got everything configured except for a routing protocol. And so if we look at router one, uh, I will show IP route. We have a very bland looking routing table there. It's just got the three directly connected networks and that's it. I minimize that addressing. So now when it comes to the Demo text file, um, the top few things are just how I configured the IPv6 addressing. That's all that is there. And so uh, so now we move down into configuring, configuring OSPF. So of course we have to go into privilege exec mode and then into global config mode. And then of course we need to uh, go into router config mode using router OSPF 10. So 10, of course, is the process ID. It could be a different number on each router, doesn't matter. Um, and so uh, it's only of local significance, the number, as opposed to EIGRP, which of course was an autonomous system number. And so it, it was important and it did have to match. All right, so I've set a router ID. Now, of course, this is router one, so I've just been lazy and just called it all the ones. And then, so these are the network addresses of the two uh, LAN interfaces on the, um, on the on the router, and so one uh, ten one one zero and ten one two zero, and the way I've done the network command here is uh, one of the several options that are available, and so I've given the exact IP address that's been uh, given to that interface, and uh, thirty two bits worth of zeros, and so of course that's a wildcard mask, and so thirty two zeros means. Uh, it must uh, match that address completely, so all 32 bits. And so what it's basically saying here is the interface with that IP address is participating OSPF, and it belongs to area one. And so again, the same with the other uh, address on uh, the other in interface, 32 bits of zeros, a member of area one. And so this last one, of course, is for the WAN link. And so, and that's of course 192.168.10. Zero was the network number for that. And so uh, that's what we're doing on router one. Now, of course, router two is completely in area zero. So all those network commands are consistent with the way I did area, uh, the router one, but of course they're all members of area zero. And so then with router three, we've again, of course, we've got the different router ID as, as we did with router, area, router two. <laughs> and, uh, and so the two, uh, LAN interfaces are members of area two, and the um, and the WAN link is a member of area zero. So that's basically what we're going to do as far as configuration is concerned. So let's paste that into the router and see how that goes. Uh, and so paste, and so there don't seem to be any error messages here. So um, as you can see, it's in uh, router config mode there and the network commands are in and away we roll. So we've already looked at the uh, routing table 
And so uh, because it's the first router configured, not much happens. So, so we'll configure router two and then something a little extra should happen. So I'll get that config and might widen it now. Paste it in and very quickly we got an adjacency message here saying that uh, route, you know, router 2 has made of an adjacency with router 1 and it's all the way to full. So full adjacency, that's a good thing. And so now if we do show IPOSPF neighbours, again that uh, confirms that uh, the uh, console message there saying that we have full adjacency with that other router. So if we do show IP route, we now have two routes learnt from router one. And so of course, because those two, the, the two networks on router one that router two doesn't know about are actually from area one. And so that's why they have this different route. So it's OSPF into area route. And so, um, and so basically these two routes have been learnt and they've got that flag of being into area routes. And so it all seems to be qu working quite nicely now. So now let's configure a router three. Copy. Paste. And so we should get another adjacency message pretty soon. And have a look at that. We have full adjacency with router two from router three. So again, if we do show IP OSPF neighbors, we have adjacency with router two and it's full. So it's all, all a very happy setup at the moment. So let's do show IP route. And so we have, Again, two inter-area routes that have been learnt. Now that's those same routes, of course. Router three is a member of area zero and area two. And so the other routes that are within area zero are not into area because it's a member of that same area. And so like this route here has been learnt and it's just a straight O. And this area, here, this one here has also been learnt and that's a straight O. While the ones from that have come all the way from router one have got that IA tagging there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven networks in this topology. Let's see how many routes we've got. So we've got three OSPFs at the top there, we've got one, two, three connected and another OSPF there. So that's six, seven. So we have full information. So that's pretty good. Now let's go back to router two and have a look at its details. And so if we do uh, show IP OSPF neighbors. It now has two neighbors because both router one and router three are configured with OSPF as well. And so it's got adjacency to two routers. If we do uh, IP, show IP route, of course, this has got the seven routes as well. And so it's actually got four inter area routes because these ones are learnt from router one. And these ones are learnt from router three lands as well. And so it's got four inter area routes on this particular routing, routing table. So uh, we looked at neighbors, we looked at show IP route. Uh, let's have a look at uh, show IP protocol. And so what information we got? So we got OSPF uh, process 10 running. We've got a router ID of all the twos. We're on router two, that's good. Uh, we've got network commands. And of course on router two, they're all members of area zero. And we've also got these three routers showing as being information sources. And so it's all some pretty good information. Now, if we do show IP OSPF database, see the entries in the database for that. And so where are we? Oh, so this is all the output here. 
And so you'll notice that it has link states and it has, has net link states as well. Router link states and net link states. And so what routers, what their status is, and each uh, network and what status they are. So they're the two major tables that they have. And so that's all very nice. Now, if we look at either router one or router three, because it's an area border router, if we do that show IP OSPF database there, it will actually have entries for the two different areas. So you'll, uh, and so you've got area zero here. And so again, you've got the link state router link states and you've got the net link states. And so again, you've got those databases, but of course you've also got one for area two. So there's only one router in there, in area two, and these are all the routes that have been distributed around it in that. And so, yeah, we've got, because it's an, an area, bo um, area border router, it's got the databases for both. Now, uh, next chapter, when we look at that, we'll, uh, We'll actually look at how we can uh, do summarization of routes between areas, which is one of the uh, key sort of advantages of having multiple areas is having a smaller routing table and a more stable routing table. And um, and so, yeah, that, that's uh, one of the things we'll look at. Now, so that's pretty much it for EIGRP. We've done neighbors, we've done protocols, and we've done route. And we've also done database. All right, so now we'll look at IPv6. So what are we going to do with that? So of course, IPv6 routing is not on by default, so we need to do this command here. And then of course, we're already in global config mode because of that. And so we then go into router config mode and we set a router ID. Of course, as with all IPv6 routing protocols, you don't do network commands. You actually go into interface mode and say that this interface is participating in whatever it might be. And so, of course, in this case, we're talking about OSPF 11, because that's the process number we gave it. And again, the gigabit is part of area one. Now, I'm only doing one of the gigabits. I'm just doing this particular one. And of course, the serial, is part of area zero. Uh, on router two, uh, everything's of course a member of area zero. So all three interfaces that are active are. And then on router three, again, we're only doing one interface, one LAN interface, sorry. And so again, like with all of them, we have to turn the routing on, to have to turn on OSPF, give it an ID, and then course the gig gigabit is part of area two and the serial is part of area zero so that should do it for that so let's get this configured so router one so no errors that I can see Let's do show IPv6 route. Of course, no other routers are running OSPF, so we're not going to have any of those yet. But we've got these two connected interfaces at the moment. So the, the G00 and the uh, S000, I'm assuming, yeah. All right. Now, let's get R2 going. Of course, then we should get some adjacency and some routes working. Copy, oops, paste. So again, I don't think I saw any errors. No, I didn't. And we do have an adjacency, so that's pretty good. So let's do show IPv6 OSPF neighbors. And so we have that one neighbor. And so of course that's router one. Let's widen that so it's all in one line. So it's all very good. And then so show IPv6 route. And so we have that LAN learnt. Now they've changed the codes a bit for IPv6. So OI means 
it's from OSPF and it's an inter-area route, so it means the same thing. It's just a slightly different code in the routing table. And so now, of course, we've got with this router, two, three directly connected networks and one OSPF network. So that's as good as we're going to get so far. So let's get router three up. Get its config. Uh, don't see any errors. We have full adjacency. So let's do show IPv6 OSPF neighbors. And so, of course, we've got router 2 fully adjacent. So show IPv6 route. Oh, bad typing. Very bad typing. Anyway, so we have one OSPF into area route. So that's from the LAN on uh, router one. We have one that's been learnt from the LAN on router two. And we have the WAN link that's between router one and router two. So we've learnt three routes from OSPF, one of them into area. And so again, now here we've got one, two, three, four, five networks in, on IPv6. So one, two, three, four, five networks here. So seems to be pretty good. So we looked at neighbors. We've looked at OSPF. Uh, let's do show IPv6 protocol. Now, as per normal, the IPv6 protocol command seems to be a little more brief than the IPv4 version. So it's telling us what areas have which interfaces. And so this area two has that, area zero has that. And so it's OSPF 11. And that's about all the information it gives us. So yeah, a bit briefer. But of course we've got, uh, Show IP OSPF, sorry, it should be IPv6. Too many bad old habits. Uh, database. And so again, because this is router three, it's a member of two areas. Uh, and so with area two, we've got this area information here. And so we've got into area prefixes, we've got uh, link states, we've got inter area prefix link states, and so on. So uh, that's what we get with that. And then router and area zero is the rest. And so we've got the uh, router link states, of course, the three routers are involved in area zero. Uh, in the area of course, uh, one and three. Uh, and so the link states as well. And there's, there's inter area prefixes as well. So um, yeah, all the information is there. And so as we said, it's an area border router for this as well. And so it's got the two sets of databases. Now, I think that was pretty much all I was planning on looking at. So, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, what I was now, of course, that's chapters eight and nine I've demonstrated. So uh, after this, of course, is chapter ten, and then uh, we'll have a um, and so which of course is uh, advanced in configuration and troubleshooting, and uh, and then after that, of course, um, we would um, we'll ha have a bit of a, a a practice run for the uh, for I'll demo the practice run for the skills test. Now, uh, now one thing I didn't highlight a great deal of, I suppose, is basically if we were doing single area OSPF, probably all of these entries would have all been area zero, basically. And so, of course, on router one 
and router three, that's where the differences would have been. Everything would have been area zero. And of course, this topology is pretty small. So, you know, in, in a real world situation, this would be single area OSPF. It's not big. You only need it for very, very large networks. Um, and so that's pretty much the major difference. And so, of course, it just means with multi-area OSPF, you've got extra roles for routers that are used. And so you've got your you've got your uh, area border routers as well. Uh, and so uh, that's again, you want you'd want those routers to have a few more resources probably because they've got those extra databases. And of course, they're going to be calculating those database entries and routing table entries more often because they've got two areas they're involved in. And so, you know, um, they should have a decent amount of uh, resources available to them. So that's pretty much it for, for the chapter we're going to look at. And so um, I hope you all have a nice day. You will stay healthy in these times. And I'll talk to you again for the next chapter. Have a nice one.